Inside Apple's iPhone factory in China. Hello lovely YouTube family, welcome back to Trending Tech. In today's video we're going to talk about Inside Apple's iPhone factory in China. Before we start, I would like you to hit that red subscribe button so you never miss out on any of our videos. Last month it emerged that Apple, the most valuable company in the world, and supposedly an icon of squeaky clean progressive values brushed, aside allegations of child labor within its key Chinese supply chain. The suggestion is that Big Apple supplier named Soyeon Electronics employed workers as young as 14 in the interest of keeping up with the ferocious appetite for Apple goods in the West. Apple soon but maintained ties for months and even years afterwards. With new allegations like this and spate of suicides associated with the brand's manufacturing base over the years, we thought it was time we put out our lanyards and take a peek inside an iPhone factory in China. The first and most important thing to understand is that Apple factories in China aren't technically Apple factories at all. Instead, the California tech giant subcontracts its manufacturing out to a firm called Harm High Precision Industry Limited, which is much more popularly known as Foxconn Technology Group or simply Foxconn. Foxconn was founded by colorful Taiwanese businessman Terry Goh and has been playfully dubbed the Donald Trump of Taiwan and is reportedly worth somewhere worth 5 billion US dollars. The Zingzhou government saw the factory as a huge opportunity for development in an area that had been bypassed by China's boom. Officials wanted to rebrand a place to ride it as a source of migrant laborers and unfairly tarnished as a land of thieves and counterfeiters. As a final assembly point for the iPhone, China also functions as a base for Apple's global tax strategy. In the Zingzhou bonded zone, typically at customs, Foxconn sells the finished iPhones to Apple. After purchasing the iPhones, Apple then resells the good to Apple subscribers. The process largely takes place electronically. Foxconn is the biggest employer in China with 1.3 million members of staff on the books in 2018. It manufactures consumer electronics for a variety of companies from Samsung, Dell to HP, but is most famous for manufacturing Apple products and most notably the iPhone. Fully half of all the world's iPhones, many hundreds of millions, are manufactured at a sprawling Foxconn facility on the outskirts of Zingzhou. Foxconn recently introduced machines to do part of the work on this line. Here, a machine attaches a tiny buckle to the motherboard. If anything goes wrong with this particular iPad, Apple uses this buckle to trace the machine back to this line on this date. Zingzhou is a city of around 9.5 million people in the human province, historically a poverty-stricken province of the People's Republic. Locals often refer to Zingzhou Foxconn plan as iPhone City and that's a pretty fair description. At peak times, some of 350,000 staff work there, most living in dormitories on site, building the build up to a big new iPhone release. The plant can produce as many as a half a million units a day. That's nearly 350 every minute. Around the factory, supporting businesses such as restaurants, massage parlors, and shoe shops have sprung up to support the mammoth workforce. Inside the Zingzhou factory, which is dedicated to the final stage of the iPhone assembly, some 400 discrete tasks are broken down and carried out by its army of workers. Most employees will perform one task repeatedly over and over again day after day. This could be as interesting as soldiering or as dull as fitting a single screw into the back of the devices again again and again. So how did they recruit back in 2017? A student at NYU called Din Zhaozhing went undercover for six months at Zing Zhao's plant to investigate the labor situation. According to Zing's report, all he had to do was get hired was to join a queue of eager applicants outside the factory. Zing was asked for his identification and retired to recite the English alphabet and it was in common use in the factory. Then he was in. Zing worked on the assembly line with that around 200 other recruits, autonomously assembling many hundreds of devices per shift. He said the work was boring and tiring, but didn't report any specific abuses across the growing six-day week aside from the supervisor yelling now and then. His main complaint was the overtime was presented as voluntary, but was clearly mandatory on pain of being fired. It's been reported elsewhere that the Chinese government itself came to keep this lucrative business running smoothly steps in to help with the never-ending recruitment drive. During peak summer months and the buildup of the traditional autumn iPhone release date as a speaker, it's said to stand at the Jingzhou factory gate yelling out for workers who are optimistic and diligent. Hunan province even reportedly sets quotas for the number of workers that villages and cities should provide to keep the factory ticking over efficiently and effectively. This is where a lot of the manual work begins on this line behind me. Circuit boards are continuously moving along and these people are checking the boards and attaching individual components. And at the end of this line, as all of the components are put into boxes, this is what we end up with. Piles of motherboards ready to ship out. Gender balance on the factory floor is said to be roughly equal in the, to the typical age of factory workers between 18 and 25, though interns are frequently as young as 16 and while underage workers have been found in Apple supply chain. Nearly a dozen 15-year-old children were discovered to be working across three factories according to one report. There are no reports that Foxconn's Zhengdian facility was directly involved. Workers' conditions in Zingzhou was not as brutal as sweatshops, but they seem extraordinary to Western eyes. Factory workers stay close by the plant and dorm buildings up to 12 stories high with 8 workers sharing a room, sometimes with only one bathroom per floor, shared by many as 200 people. 
US-based pressure group China Labor was discovered during undercover investigations that workers are actively forbidden from resigning their posts during busy peak times but conceded that most egregious allegations of brutality and bullying made by others have perhaps been overstated. One worker whose role was wiping special polish onto the LCD screen said she handled around 1700 iPhones a day and that it was mundane work but also that there were worse ways things to endure in life than monotony. According to the grind of working six straight days, only seeing family on Sunday, if they happen to live locally, clearly takes a toll. The most common complaint about working at Foxconn and Zing Zhao is boredom. When New York student Zing spent the last six weeks on the production line, he said he quickly grew to hate it. Real workers, speaking anonymously, have claimed a high turnover of staff. After a year, people get bored or disinterested. When that happens, they leave. Other Foxconn workers have said that the building iPhones isn't exactly their childhood dream. The facility is no better or worse than other Chinese factories they'd worked at. Of course, there is a much darker side to the allegations leveled to Apple. Although not directly related to the assembly plant in Zingzhou, it has been reported that Apple products have been made using forced Uyghur labor, an ethnic minority in the China who endure horrific working conditions and even wage theft by unscrupulous overseers. According to the New York Times, lawmakers in the U.S. have proposed legislation designed to curb American companies' ability to use forced weaker labor. Apple is said to be set out to weaken the bill. Although Apple for its part says it did not lobby against the legislation, but instead had the company put constructive discussions with the relevant congressional staff. And so what we want to do today is to let all the consumers who are buying Apple products know what is really behind the production of Apple computers. And as for those MacBook makers at Suyin Electronics we mentioned at the start, when the issue came to light, Apple told the firm to address their issue or risk losing business. But Apple otherwise continued to work with Soyan for three years. Former members of the so-called supplier responsibility team at Apple told reporters from the information that the Soyan incident wasn't isolated and that profits sadly seemed to have been the driving force between decision makers. So what does the future look like for Apple and its labor practices? As living standards in China inevitably improve, so does the cost of labor, and so the factors may have well move elsewhere. Fox Foxconn recently found itself in hot water for exaggerating its staffing requirements to Apple in order to illicitly cream profits for the Californian firm. So it's not as always a cozy relationship between the two giants. Most relatively undercover student Zing observed in 2017 that several stations on the production line where he worked were already taken up by robots known as in-house Foxbots. A trend that'll surely continue. However, its iPhones are manufactured going forward into the future. Let's just hope Apple's working practices live up to the firm's lofty brand ideals and that latter-day disciples of Steve Jobs can at least help someone, somewhere get a good job. What do you think? Is Apple justified keeping suppliers at an arm's length in order to keep costs competitive for the end user? Tell us your ideas in the comments. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video. If you didn't, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any amazing video from us.